pressing on the upward way new heights i'm gaining every day still praying as i onward bound lord plant my feet on higher ground lord lift me up and let me stand by faith on someone's feet this year on a higher ground experience that it will be evident it will be known undeniable in the name of Jesus ha. I want to live above the world to say time God at me for 2023 the Lord plant my feet plant the feet of my husband plant the feet of my wife plant my own feet plant the feet of my children on a higher ground experience that it is undeniable plant my feet on higher ground that my life would have the speed that my life would have the acceleration it needs to get from where it is right now to where it ought to be in the name of jesus lift your voice and prayer say god plant our feet on higher ground 
salvation in the name of cause Jesus. us to have the oh higher God, ground God, experience oh God cause us to have in a the higher name of experience. Jesus in the name of Jesus Mandala plant our feet, oh God. God. plant our feet oh God on the higher ground Jesus plant our feet Jesus plant our feet on the higher ground in the name of Jesus oh mighty God plant our feet oh Lord Brethren, it is until Jesus. the feet of a person is planted on a higher ground for that experience that experience would not come because when men's feet are in a merry clay, when men's feet are where they were not supposed to be, they become stuck. Even if you have a chariot, a chariot running in a clay will never be fast. And so it is our declaration that the feet of God's people in this house will be planted at a solid ground. A higher ground where the mud of life cannot slow you down. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Where the mud of life would never slow you down because it is a plane where God has designed for your feet. It is our month and our year of divine evidence. Hallelujah. 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 Before I get ahead of myself, I want you to be seated for a while. We are grateful to God for the experience and for the things that he is doing. We give him all of the honor and worship in Jesus' name. So there are two texts we are going to read. One is a text that caused or that became the reason for the second text. So we employed both of them to address the topic as the Lord gave us a revelation of it. Because often God would give you some clues. All you need to do is to run with it and his spirit will begin to help you to get more insight and understanding. Praise the Lord. The first text is Acts 3. From verse 1 to 10. And as we read, I want you to read between the lines. And have kind of a little bit of a romance with God's word. So that we all will land on the same page by the time we're through this morning. It says, now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer. First of all, for it to be the hour of prayer, it is something that is done routinely. God had to highlight the fact that this is a routine thing that was taking place. So they were going at the hour. They were not just going to pray. They were going at the hour. Of prayer. Those of you who understand how people in the Middle East live, even in their religious inclinations, you would understand that whether it is the Muslim people or the Jewish people, you know, they, they have set time and hours. And when they want to go, they, for example, some of them will just shut down their business. Even if you come with a million naira or a million dollar, whatever, they have no business with you until they go and honor that hour. Hallelujah. So they went to pray at the at, at that place, at the, the temple. And a certain man, no name was given. A certain man. There's a certain man in this congregation. There's a certain woman in this congregation that needs this kind of a testimony. You didn't get what I said. There is a certain man there is a certain woman that needs this evidence in the name of Jesus. The Bible says he was laying from his mother's womb. He did not walk to that place. He was carried. He was carried. 
Now, pay attention. The first verse said they went to the temple to pray. But they carried a man that had a very serious need that is supposed to go to the temple. If you are carrying him, carry him to where you are going. I do hope that I'm carrying everybody. I want to be very slow. Carry him to where you are going. But when they carried him, they went and dropped him somewhere. He said, whom they had laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask arms of them that entered into the temple. What is wrong with taking him with you to the temple? That if there is God in that temple, let that God address his matter. So they carry the man that is lame to the gate of the temple. But this is a beautiful gate. But then the man was not a reflection of the beauty of that gate. There are conditions that have been in the life of men that has never been a reflection of who they are or who they're supposed to be or where they are. That one is living in America but it looks like it's not here. It's not a reflection. We declare it over our atmosphere, over this house, that as God gave us this revelation and insight, that the life of people will evidently become the reflection of where God designed for them to be. In the name of Jesus. We were not done with that verse. The Bible says the gate is called beautiful. To ask arms of them that entered. So like he was like now a decoration. He was now like an irrelevant fellow. He was like a person going through the motions of breathing and living. May God help us in Jesus name. That is not the testimony of anyone here. In the name of Jesus, we declare that your yesterday will never be better than your today. You will never know a better yesterday. In the name of Jesus Christ. Next verse. Who seeing Peter and John as as who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple ask an arms. He was beggarly. For him, the temple was no longer something in, you know, you would imagine that this man should, should ask them to say, oh, you are apostle. Apostle Peter, please. However, the people that carried me, that cared for me, this is how far they brought me. They did not take me to the temple. Apostle Peter, apostle John, Please help me and take me to that temple you are going to. That I may meet with your God. He didn't. Because the condition has become normal. And has changed his mentality and understanding. Of the fact of life. I bring you a word this morning. Anything that has beclouded your mind. And has given you the wrong view of what God can do. We break it this day in the name of Jesus. We command it to be broken off your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Instead of asking the right kind of question. Because now we know. We did not know before. But now we know that he could talk. He was not only unable to move. But he could talk. But even when he could talk, he was saying the wrong things. He was asking for the wrong kind of situation, uh, solution to his situation. Anybody here today, even in this commission, whether you are online, you couldn't make it, or you are listening, you are on your way, and even as many as the Lord our God himself shall bring, we declare over their lives that when they come that close to what God is doing, they will present to God the right kind of request and get the right kind of solution. Am I hearing an answer here? 
Am I hearing an amen? Am I hearing a response? Do I have a witness that you will not ask and ask and miss? So he was asking them for money. Interestingly so, the man of God said something to him. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him and said, Paka <laughs> Dabadadus. Look on us. Look on us. Next verse. And he gave heed unto them and expecting to receive something from them. Expecting silver and gold. The best blessings of life are not resident within the elements of silver and gold. I said the best blessings of life are not resident within the elements of silver and gold. I'm speaking as the Lord is leading upon my spirit. That the best elements of life are not resident within the elements of silver and gold. There is a blessing that God can give that is beyond the elements of silver and gold. And by design, they had none to give him. Next verse. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. Is that a disappointment? No, no. He just said, have I none? It's not a disappointment. There was about to be a release. That's better than silver and gold. Mandala Bradozodo. There was about to be a release that is more than silver and gold. Silver and gold have I none. I don't have silver. I don't have gold. But such as I have, give I thee, Pada Brado Sotoliba, in the name of Yeshua Hamashiach, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Your problem is not silver and gold. Your problem is the ability to rise, to carry yourself from where you are to where God wants you to be. That is a declaration that you are able to move. You are able to get unstuck from where the enemy thought you should be kept to begin to be beggarly and move into a place where God is about to set to your life. Manali Brando Zotoliba. Hey! Next verse. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately, somebody say immediately. Immediately, his feet and ankle bones received strength. So, so what was happening, what people were seeing was different from what happened. What happened is that the, the issues of life, the condition, the, 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 the elements of wickedness that has been there from his mother's womb to prevent him from fulfilling destiny has seized his ankle bones. Has seized his ankle bones. You know what? The, the ankle, that is a connection of your, your foot and, and, and your, your, how do you call this bone? Those of you in the nursing practice, praise the Lord. Feel more, praise the Lord. That is the connection that is necessary to li link up to the rest of your, your body and carry your, you know, as the limb is, it needs to carry your frame, right? But the ankle bones had been seized. Now it receives strength. We declare that every area of your life and destiny, every angle ah, that needs the strength that is necessary for speed and acceleration is released in this season. In the name of Jesus Christ, every angle, every angle as touching anything because you are in contact with this blessing that the Lord is releasing in this season. You will receive that strength that is necessary 
to enter in to the realm and territories that you would never be able to in the past. In the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 8. And he leaping stood up and walked. So first he stood up and then he walked and entered with them into the temple. Walking and leaping and praising God. So he was supposed to be a praise. His life was supposed to be beautiful. But for years, he was kept in obscurity. He was now the subject of ridicule. Hey, Jesus, we declare that everyone hearing the sound of my voice, you will be transformed from the realm that the enemy thought they had concluded your matter into an experience that you will be praising God. Because what the enemy wants you to do is to complain more, more and feel depressed and frustrated and feel incapacitated. But the Lord is giving the strength, the strength that is necessary, the strength that is adequate, the strength that is relevant, the strength that is important, the strength that is evident that you might be able to praise him because that is why you were created. That you might praise him. For so long, stones have attempted to praise God in your place. But in this season, there is a shift. Somebody say amen. amen. Verse 9. And all the people saw him. Those who gave him money this morning saw him. Those who gave him arms yesterday saw him. Those who told him, this is the last time I'm going to give you, they saw him. Hey, those who, 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 who looked at him as the, the, the symbol of their generosity saw him. Those who saw, saw him as a person they can, they can cajole saw him. He said, all the people, it is not written for nothing. That is good and bad, saw him. Even if, if they are from your village, they will see it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Even if they have concluded your matter, they will have to see it. As long as they have eyes, they will see it. Because the Lord prepares a table for his own children. In the present, in their very before, that they too will see that the testimony you they say you will not share, that is the testimony that is happening. It is happening in the name of Jesus. The Bible said they saw him. They saw him doing what he could not do. They saw him. They saw him now from the gate. He is now going to the temple. Where they did not want to take him before. So that he would be at the gate and be a symbol of their generosity. Ten. Last verse. And they knew that it was he that was that it was he which sat for arms at the beautiful gate. Somebody's life is about to be transformed. Amen. Beautiful gate plus ugly experience. Transformation is happening. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which has happened unto him.
Now, 4 verse 14 says, And seeing the man who had been healed standing there with them, it was too obvious to deny. Even if you bewitch, even if you bewitch, permit me to say that. Standing with them, where? 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 With them, not at the gate. You didn't get what I said. Standing with them. With the apostle at the temple, eh? standing with them, with the apostle at the temple, power change hands, power change hands, wickedness just failed, hypocrisy failed, power change hands, that he's standing with them. At the temple, hey, my wife will say, Hey, when the anointing is strong in her, Judah, hey, standing with them, <laughs> for them not to say nothing that they were dumbfounded. That is Oibo speaking, they were dumbfounded. Whether they were found to be dumb or dumbfounded, whichever is correct. But they were dumbfounded or compounded in their ignorance. <laughs> Let's get the next verse and see what they did. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves. What is happening? Maybe they were using his name to fight us return. So they just to lose one candidate. I'm trying to bring it home to America where we are. Maybe they were using him. SSN 999 404 333 4. They said, what happened? We just lose one. So they confer among themselves. You see, some people know how to form an opinion to analyze another man's testimony or to analyze another man's condition when they themselves have nothing to offer. Every conferment or conf conference held against your life and testimony, we command their counsel to dissolve. I say we command their council to dissolve. We command their efforts to be frustrated. In the name of Jesus. Next verse. Mandala Branda Saying that what shall we do to these men? For, for that a notable miracle has been done by them. It's manifest to all them that dwell in Houston. And we cannot deny it. It's already confirmed. We cannot deny it. What can we do? This thing is serious. Huh. When the Lord was downloading this in my spirit, I tried to define evidence. Then I made a note. Sometimes when you do these things, you wake up in the night and write something down. When you wake up again, you will forget it. That's why I tell us as a church, as a praying church, have a note or a way of maybe your phone, something in silence, and when you just get up, grab it and write it. As it flows. So evidence is that which serves to prove the truth of the very fact or point at issue to convincingly reveal the moments of truth in the matter. 
Some people are writing. Let me, let me say it again. Is that which serves to prove the truth of the very fact or point at issue, that is point of argument, to convincingly reveal moments of truth in the matter. Evidence. Next verse. But that it spread no further among the people. Let us deadly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. In this name of Jesus. They want it to be controlled. They want that the testimony will not spread. That people will not be aware that God has changed your life. No matter the effort they make, they cannot frustrate the testimony. In the name of Jesus, we declare it so that no matter what agenda they have, they cannot frustrate the testimony. In the name of Jesus. So our God is a faithful God. And he knows how to make your story to turn around. I challenge you in this service today. That if you are here, God is set to do that which was thought impossible. We are convinced and we want you to also be convinced about it. That the God we serve, he is the one that comes in when men had forgotten you. When men had abandoned you. When men have said, okay, it's over. Or you have a restriction in your life, unable to access certain places. Undeniable testimonies are able to manifest because of whom God is. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how they arrange themselves and begin to make, you know, like efforts to stop it. It would never manifest in the name of Jesus Christ. And yeah, I know yesterday I made some declarations that the failures of yesterday and all those things would never prosper. And so it shall be for you that God will bring it to pass in your life. That you will indeed be a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to say this. That true blessings are such that gives you the grace and ability to become an evidence of the goodness of God. A true blessing. Those are, you know, such that gives you the grace and ability to become an evidence of the goodness of God. So when you say God is good, people will look at you and say, yeah, I remember before. And I know now the difference is clear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so if you can take your eyes off the silver and gold and put them on his salvation and greatness. I want to say it again. If you can take your eyes off from the silver and the gold and put them on his salvation and greatness, that will mark the beginning of an experience where you access his presence and begin to receive everything else because everything else follows after the experience of his presence. So in this service today, we believe that God is set to do a new thing. I was only introducing the topic for us today. We have a lot more to talk about throughout the month regarding divine evidence and that which God is said to do. But from the text and the context of the message, we present you our month, our year of divine evidence. Shall we rise? <clears throat> Blessed be your name, O Lord, in heaven and the earth. Blessed be your name. You're going to pray and say, Father, by mercy, let your blood bring about divine evidence in the life of this person I'm holding. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and begin to pray.
pray for that person. Say, I use the blood of Jesus to come against every force that will want to stand against your divine evidence. Every force that will want to resist your divine evidence. Every force that will want to resist your divine evidence. Every force that will want to stand against it or resist it. We come against it as a church. Every force that will want to hinder. Every force that will want to stop it. Every force that would want to hinder. We come against it. We come against it. We come against it as a church. We join faith to faith. We come against any power that would want to resist your evidence. Any power that would want to resist your evidence. We come against it. Child of God, pray for that person you're holding. We come against every power that would want to spoil the testimony of who you're holding. No power can spoil your testimony. No power can spoil your testimony. No power can spoil your testimony. No power can spoil our testimony. No power can spoil it. No power can resist it. No power can hinder it. No power can spoil it. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Can you say a powerful amen? If you know that your prayers are answered, say a better amen. If you know that you're coming back with a testimony, say amen. You are young.